Hey, I just wanted to uh, spend a little time with you today and do something a little different. I just want to talk about a subject that I think is incredibly important, and that is the subject of prayer. Somebody said prayer is something that we talk the most about in church, but we do the least. I hope that's not true, but there might be some truth to it. The fact that we know we should pray and we talk about praying, but are we actually having a prayer time with the Lord on a consistent basis? And so I'm just speaking to you today to encourage you to have a personal prayer time and to spend time uh, with the Lord. What is prayer? At its simplest definition, prayer is talking to God. It's that simple. You don't have to pray in Elizabethan English. You don't have to say thou and thee and yea verily ha. You talk in your own language and you talk to God uh, using your own speech and your passion and, and, and from your heart. And that's prayer. And some people think that there are certain ways to pray, but you just talk to the Lord. Just like I'm talking to you right now, uh, that's the way you talk to the Lord. And prayer actually has three components. And it's good for us to really understand prayer. You know, one day uh, Jesus' disciples came to him in Luke chapter 11, and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he gave them the Lord's prayer. Somebody said it should actually be called the disciples' prayer, not the Lord's prayer, because we're praying to the Lord. It's, it's for us. And when you look at the Lord's Prayer or the Disciples' Prayer, you realize that there are three components to prayer. Three components. There is first of all communion or fellowship. And second, there is um, uh, intercession, uh, which is where you're praying about someone else or other needs. And then there is petition, the third factor. And that's when you pray for things for yourself. And so if you look at the Lord's Prayer, I use the Lord's Prayer as a guide every day. So I start out uh, with the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I'll say that, but then that triggers automatically for me communion and fellowship with the Lord. And I start with praise and, and thanksgiving, and I tell the Lord what I'm thankful for, and I have this list that I go through almost every time. I thank Him for His grace and His mercy and for faith and hope and joy and peace and love and strength and encouragement and courage and His help. And, and I thank Him for my wife and my kids and my daughters-in-law and my uh, daughters-in-law and my grandkids. And I thank Him for my church and all of our people. And I just go through this list of things and I thank Him for every good and perfect gift. And then I just spend time loving on Him and telling Him how awesome He is. And I go through His attributes and tell Him how He's awesome. And I just commune with Him. Sometimes I tell Him things that are going on in the day. Sometimes I tell Him about something that's gonna happen that day, just like I would be talking to a friend. I try to make it very, very personal. I, re I have reverence for God, but also intimacy. That's communion. So our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then you go into intercession. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what are those two things? Your kingdom come is, is that you're praying, Jesus, I want you to rule and reign in my life or in the lives of other people. And so this is where, you know, I, I literally ask Jesus for his kingdom to come. I believe one of these days he'll rule and reign for a thousand years. But then I say, Lord, rule and reign in my heart. Help me to obey you today. And then Lord, I go into some spiritual warfare. I say, Lord, just de destroy the works of the devil and defeat the enemy and dethrone the devil and remove him from circumstances and situations, tear down every stronghold, uh, take down every high thing and argument that exalts itself against Christ, take captive every thought, every vain imagination. And then I pray for the lost because they're in captivity to sin and the devil and sin sits on the throne of their heart. So I say, God, save the lost. Jesus said, uh, unless you repent or unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So I say, Lord, help people to get saved. And I just spend time praying for sinners to be saved. So you see how I'm praying for other people. If I know somebody that's bound in sin, if somebody that's sick, somebody needs a miracle, see the devil has done this, sin has done this, then I'm saying, Lord, step in with your kingdom power, loose them and set them free. So that's intercession. I'm praying for the needs of others. And then finally, there's, uh, there's, there's petition. And so give us this day our daily bread. So I pray for my personal needs and whatever it is that I need him to forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against me. So I keep short accounts with God. If I've sinned, 
God, please forgive me and I forgive others who've sinned against me. Don't lead me into temptations, but deliver me from evil. So see, I'm praying for myself. Help me, God, to live right today, not to give in to the devil. Keep me from hard times and trials. And then I close with communion. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. It's yours. It all belongs to you. And I just want to praise you and worship you and thank you again. And so if you can just do that, think communion, intercession, petition. Fellowship with the Lord. Pray for other people. Pray then for your own personal needs. You can have a really vibrant prayer life. And what could you say, how can I pray? You can pray for the Lord for 20 minutes, 30 minutes or longer just by doing those things, going through the Lord's prayer. And so are you praying? You know, how's your prayer life? That's just a question I want to ask you. How's your prayer life? And, and are you willing to take steps to improve your prayer life? Here's my last suggestion before I let you go. Um, some people do better in the morning. Some people do better in the evening. Find the time that's best for you. For me, I get up early in the morning. I walk two miles in my neighborhood and I talk with Jesus. You know, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. And that's how I see myself. I'm just walking with God and I'm talking. And I laugh because I tell people I'm the guy that mumbles, walks around mumbling in the neighborhood. I'm sure people looking out their door, they, there goes the guy that mumbles. But I'm praying and I don't care about what other people think. But for you, it might be at night. For you, it might be sitting in your sunroom, your screened-in porch, or maybe a little nook in your house, or at the breakfast table where you just get your Bible and you're alone with God. You, you read and then you just get alone with the Lord. Find out what works for you. Some people pray and they do good driving on their way to work. Just figure out whatever works best for you and then, and then stick with it and spend time with Jesus. And you'll be amazed at how it just revolutionizes your life. Just try not to have a hit and miss mentality but spend time daily with him and watch as your spiritual life is enriched i hope this helps you today uh, praying people are powerful people praying churches are powerful churches and i want you to know the power of god in your life hope this helps